What's up, it's Charlie Shuffler, and I'm going in the DMs with Mascarilla. So I am from Long Beach area. Well, I, I'm from Orange County, Long Beach area. I'm 20 years old, and I'm a professional horseback rider. <laughs> no, no, I'm a, uh, I'm a producer, songwriter, stylist, just a creative overall. What's your dream collab? My dream collab would probably be Kid Cut, something with Kid Cudi, or something with Pharrell. Um, that's like the more hip hop area. If it wasn't hip hop, I'd probably have to do something with this band called Cold War Kids, or something with let me, or something with King Cruel. Um, yeah, that's my. Those are my dream collabs. My favorite song at the moment, man. Uh, what am I bumping? Let me go through. Hold on. My favorite song would probably have to be. Oh, actually, it'd be um, Youth. It'd be Youth by Daughter. How did I get a song with Lil Yachty? So basically, I woke up and he uh, DM'd me on Twitter. But I had worked with some of the, some of his close affiliates, so I think that's how he kind of heard of me, to be honest. So um, was he already following you? No, nah, no, nah, he was not following me. Um, I literally just woke up to a DM. He said, send me some beats, you're fire. Or something like that, or I need beats. That was that. So what did you do after that? DM? Were you like showing your friends, or did you screen? Oh no, I showed. Things? Yeah, I was hype, bro. I was super hype because it's funny, cause I have I have went to Lil Yachty's first show in LA like back in 2015. Like I don't even think I made music yet, or I think I was just starting, or something like that. I remember I had told Pete because like all my friends were taking pictures with him after, and I was like, nah, I don't really want to take a picture with him because like I'm gonna work with him. Like I'm not really like I'm a fan, but like I'm not on some like fan shit like that if that makes sense i was like i really want to work with him so i like actually i went up to him i think i think i talked to him I was like oh i make beats like let's work and like that was that so, but like then yeah i just woke up i was hyped up i showed everyone i was like hey Lil yadi dm me like we're gonna work you know and then i sent them like a million beats so when did you did you hear back from him did you get feedback like when did you know that he was actually gonna use one of your beats that's crazy too. So I so he's like, I need beats, and I was like, all right, of course. What's your email? Sent him a ton of beats. I didn't hear back from him for like a week, and then like a week later, he posted on his Twitter like a pre like it was his first like preview of Lil Boat Two, and it was uh, my beat in the video. Like so, I was like super hyped up. I was like, like because I I didn't even know he had used one of my beats. You know what I'm saying? So then I'm like getting people are tagged because like he posts on Instagram and Twitter. People are tagging me on the video on Instagram or like sending me the sharing the tweet with me on Twitter. So I was like, like, and again, I just woke up to it and I was like, what the heck? And then I went crazy. And then, um, yeah, that's so, how that's that's how I knew he didn't tell me he used it or anything. He just posted a snippet on Twitter. So and how does that process work? I feel like on Twitter, there's this conversation for the past year about producers being properly compensated. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? If you just send it to him, then does his team reach out and be like, he's using it. We need like you to sign this. Like what, like what's like the technicalities behind that? So, okay. For me, all right. So it could get complicated because a lot of times the communication between the rapper and the producer is like non-existent, especially if you have like, an upcoming or like not as famous producer such as myself dealing with like a mainstream artist a popular like it's a celebrity like Lil Yachty like the the I mean Lil Yachty was great with communication like luckily but a lot of artists aren't just because they're busy or because they're getting a million texts and dms a day like it's not always on purpose um so for me I knew the song was going to be on his um, album so what I did was I didn't really like wait for him to reach i mean I, w I did talk to him i was like hey like i know the song's gonna be on the album or whatever like what do i need to do to get paid and all of that stuff 
so basically i got like his like his lawyer's information and then i got a lawyer which is like i think if you're an upcoming producer like very important i got a lawyer and then i just had them to handle all that i didn't even deal with it because for me i was like i wasn't gonna wait i wasn't gonna wait to like see if the song came i wasn't gonna like do anything i was like you know i'm gonna just get a lawyer and let him handle all that and luckily like Lil Yachty was great like his team and him were like super they're very like like communicated very easily got back to us like very quickly they weren't like trying to pull a fast one or anything like that like they paid me everything was like it's very smooth you know what I'm saying like everything was cool but I think I think if as far as like producers getting compensated, whether it's for like an artist as big as Lil Yachty or it's like a smaller artist, whatever it is, I think the number one thing is to get a lawyer. Because at the end of the unless you're like a like you know, law, like music law, like the back of your hand, like I would get a lawyer because everything is so complicated and like there's just a bunch of little like clauses and stuff you don't know about and so if you get a lawyer you don't have to complain about anything like there's no going to twitter to complain you get a lawyer and he handles it for you or he or she handles it for you so was there one instance in particular that made you sure music was your passion so i didn't start really making music until i got because i went to nebraska and played football and got hurt and then when i came back home is when i like really you went to, like, Nebraska. I, okay, so I went to a small... It wasn't Nebraska University. I went to a small school in Nebraska. I was playing football. That was, like, my thing. I obviously was always into music. Like, I was always into underground music. Um, so what, like, what were you playing? Like, what position? I played... So, I played receiver and corner. Um, and, But when I... In college, I played corner. So, was this in... Was this high school and college, or...? Where I was playing, what do you mean? Like, when you went to Nebraska, were you in high school? Oh, no, no, I went to, I went to high school out in Orange County. Oh, okay. So, I went to high school. I grew up I grew up in Long Beach and Orange County. So, then um, I went to high school. And then right out of high school, I go to Nebraska. And I think when I graduated, I had downloaded, like, this program, what I used called Logic Pro X. That's what I used to make beats. I had just downloaded it for fun because, like, I've always been good with, like, cracking programs. So, I just downloaded it was messing around making beats but like didn't take it serious like it was just like for fun like I never really like cared about it went to Nebraska because like there was like a couple months in between I graduated and went go to Nebraska I didn't really make beats like that and then I got hurt while I was in Nebraska and I'll be just bored like in my dorm so then I started making beats and then I came home and I had like made 10 beats or whatever and then I randomly had followed Cold Heart on Twitter and he tweeted, um, I need beats. And I sent him like all 10 of the beats I've made and he used one of them. And it was a song called Never um, by him. And then the song kind of got big and I was like, oh shit, people are like fucking with this. And then I started like really like trying to make beats. But like before that, I used to, like even when I was a little kid, um, my dad, I would make like on CDs, I would make mixes. Of like everything from like rock music, mainstream rap, underground rap. Uh, my dad's from Trinidad, so I put a bunch of reggae on there. And so like even from I, when I was a little kid, my dad would always tell me he would be like, "Hey, Ike, you should do something in music." Like I, I don't know, I've always been just like inclined. Like I've always had like a good ear for it, I guess. Like I never really like tried making music because I was always like focused on sports or whatever so I never really thought I could like I, don't, I didn't think it was possible so then like I don't know just from like a young age though like I've always like I, I was going on blogs when I was like 12 13 okay I have an older brother so he would be showing me and then I'd be going on like allhiphop.com or hot new hip-hop like finding like I mean I guess so what like those songs are already popping but at a young age, like, I was finding, like, music, showing my friends, and then that song would blow up, like, six months later, and I was doing that at a young age, and so then, like, I don't know, I guess I just always kind of, like, like, I always, for me, like, I thought I would do something with music, like, in the business part, I just thought I would do something music-related, like, I don't know, eventually, but I didn't realize I was gonna be creating it like that, so. Um, you mentioned your dad's from Trinidad, so, um, 
what like where are your parents from what do they do um so my mom she's from northern california and um she works she's a personal trainer and she works at uh nema marcus and then like that's kind of how i got like into clothes and stuff like that was my mom because even when i was like in middle school i'd be wearing like white pants and like two different color shoes and then like a random graphic tee my mom would always encourage it like my mom would always tell me like just be different that's what my mom always told me when i was young like just be different and then my dad he's from um he's or no I, well, he's from he's from guyana and then he i have a lot of relatives in trinidad like my aunt i have aunts from trinidad who like live there and stuff like that but my dad is from guyana and then like moved to trinidad and so um he, when he came to America when he was like 17 or 18 or something like that and he's always been really good with computers like he didn't he didn't graduate high school or anything like he just was like self-taught like didn't go to college for it and he actually started his own computer business and then um that's kind of when I was younger like I had my own computer when I was like 10 and he like was like finessing it for like the people he would like his clients he would like get computers and then that's why from a young age I was playing like Counter Strike and like I also had an older brother too which helped a lot but like that's how I kind of got really good at like cracking programs and like being good with technology but then my mom was really good with like the creativity like she just was like she was making scrapbooks and like stuff like that and like showing me how to like just do scrapbook and like artsy stuff and then my dad was like really like 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 very ahead of his time when it came to like technology and stuff like that because he was like putting us on like he like make sure he made sure we all had computers he made sure that we were like learning them and stuff like that like i would go to his work and like help out any way i can so were your parents supportive when you left school to pursue music um so they think i'm still in college low-key <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, how long have you been out of college? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my dad, he moved away when I was like 13 or four, like 13 or 14. He moved up north and we don't really talk that much anymore. Um but shout out to my dad. Um mom cuz I went to community college when I got back. <laughs> my mom uh so my mom thinks i'm in college like right now like she literally thinks i'm like taking my finals like like i'm in finals week right now wait i don't understand <laughs> how long have you been out of community college i dropped out a couple months ago oh okay that's not too bad no no no, it's not too bad I mean, it's like two years no like... no no i dropped out a couple months ago uh, but with my mom, she just is like, well, both my parents, are, they want me to go to school. So just to like, uh, like, I don't live, I haven't lived with my mom for a long time. So like, it's not like she's keeping tabs on like what I'm doing day to day. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's not like she knows like what I'm doing and what I'm not. Wait, but do you think like, no, they know gonna, that. But is your mom going to watch this interview? She might low key, yeah. She she yeah she is, but like it's all good. It's all good. Cool, cause like, nah, it's all good. It's all good. But but my my dad, I haven't talked to my dad in a long time. Like we've talked about like random stuff, but like we haven't talked about like each other's lives in like a year or so. Like we we don't we're not really on the best terms right now. But he would not be happy, like at all my mom would probably be like not happy about it but she would be like well like you pay your own like i i take i pay my own rent and like like i bought my own car like you know i take care of myself so it's like what can like so i, I always told i always said look if my mom pays my if someone pays my rent i'll go back to school i don't care but like i'm you know i'm grown i'm grown so i don't really have to do any of that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> weirdest fan interaction all right this is a good one all right so basically like a year ago this girl had dm me a picture of her pig like her it was a picture of her pig and she pretty much was like hey i want you to slaughter my pig and then like fuck me in the blood or something like that and i was like didn't even reply that's probably the weirdest fan interaction i ever had 
Shout out to her though, cause like I personally don't eat pork, and I wouldn't have slaughtered your pig. So that was your <laughs> main uh, problem with that whole scenario: it was slaughtering the pig, not fucking her. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have had sex with her. I don't even know if she looked right or not, but like I probably wouldn't have had sex with her just because she came up to me. Like she came. Like that was her opening statement was like fuck, like slaughter my pig, and like fuck me. <laughs> so like I probably wouldn't have even if she was looking right I probably wouldn't have fucked her like it was just like a weird way to approach someone 